All righty. Good morning, everyone. I know today is not Friday because I only do this on Friday, but I make special concessions whenever it's uh, Festival International and a few other select groups in the community that we need to talk with. So uh, obviously Festival International is next week. So it's coming up quick. So uh, we got a lot to unpack today. We're going to be talking with Carly Viator and um, Jesse Gidry. Carly is with the Festival International. She is marketing director. And then Jesse Gidry is VP of communications at Lafayette Travel. So stick around. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about festival, a lot of bit actually. <laughs> and uh, there's a big elephant in the room. Uh, I guess that's not probably not the right terminology to use, but the, ele <laughs> the elephant in the room is Lauren Daigle is going to be headlining the, the festival, which uh, we're going to be talking about that because that's uh, crazy news. But anyway, stick around. All right. So uh, first of all, I'm glad to have you guys in here to talk about festival and Lafayette as a whole because... Uh, this is one interesting community uh, in all ways, shapes, and forms. So first, let's go ahead and uh, get our introductions in order. So Carly, uh, you are obviously the marketing director of Festival International, but go ahead and let people know kind of a little bit more about you and what you do. So yes, I'm the marketing director. This will be my sixth year working with Festival International. Um, you know, two of those were virtual, which was a neat experience, but uh, we're very, very happy to have been back in person this year and last year. So yeah, I handle all the marketing, the media, and it's a blast. It's just an amazing organization that I believe in. So that's, that's my spiel. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you. And then Jesse, go ahead and uh, tell us a little about you. And I just uh, kind of preemptively told people about you, but obviously you're <laughs> VP of communications at Lafayette Travel. So tell people about you and kind of what you do in your role in, in as shortest form you can until we dis discuss it more. <laughs> right. I'll tell you what I tell my son when he asks me what he does. I get people <laughs> to come to Lafayette. So I'm with the uh, Tourism Bureau here, LCVC, or you might know us by Lafayette Travel. We represent Lafayette Parish uh, and the cities that are in it. And then obviously Festival National is a huge deal for us. Um, me personally, as the Vice President of Communications, I oversee anything that kind of you see here um, about Lafayette, either on the web, social media, also do a little product development. Um, we've got a, a bunch of different things that, that I do that certainly keeps it interesting awesome well okay so it's good to have both of you guys here um let's let's talk about obviously festival and kind of what it means for the lafayette community it's been around for many many years um how many years actually has it been around it's like 30 something right yeah we're at our third wow mm -hmm. okay you know what that makes sense because i'm 37 and I, I remember it being really? the same yes i know it's your festival that's it i don't want to claim it it's yeah <laughs> sure it's mine but um a guy the uh the owner of spoonbill downtown like it it it's, it happens on his birthday he every, told me that recently yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. too cool it uh started the year that my parents moved out of lafayette because of the oil bust oh. and festival was founded around that same time to try and stimulate the economy so i think it's kind of funny that i work with this organization now <laughs> i know and like that was whenever uh, they had bumper stickers that uh said last one out you know turn off the lights mm. or something like that gosh that's sad i know i know i hear that all the time i'm like dang that, like i don't feel like lafayette's in that position anymore like i don't feel like we're that as reliant on the oil field but that's another discussion for another day <laughs> um okay so Festival International has been around for 37 years. What keeps it going? Like, it, it, it's a festival that is um, non-ticketed, quote-unquote, or otherwise free. Mm -hmm. um, what keeps festival happening every year? Because I know during COVID, we were at risk of possibly not having it one year. Like, what keeps festival running? Well, there's a whole lot of moving parts. And that was one of the most fascinating surprises for me when I started to kind of understand how everything works. Um, a big, big part, obviously, is our sponsorships that help us, you know, keep this festival around financially. And um, we're super thankful for them, as we should all be. Um, our community is amazing. Our supporters, our volunteers, we fill over 1,500 volunteer shifts during wow. festival. 1,500. Which is insane and unheard of. And it's just kind of 
of a miracle that it has worked 37 times now. So big thank you to everyone that comes out and helps us with that. And then, of course, you know, we have organizations like LCVC that do a beautiful job showcasing the culture here and, you know, helping us get people here, tourists, and just celebrating our culture. Yeah. And you, you mentioned LCVC. So just in case anybody's wondering what LCVC stands for, uh, it's Lafayette Convention and Visitors Commission. Or in short, Lafayette Travel. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Lafayette Travel is the brand name. LCVC is just what everybody knows. So that's yeah. why we use it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So it takes a lot of work. Sponsors, big sponsors. You have a lot of different levels of sponsors. You right. have festival locals. Um, I, you and I actually just went out uh, a couple weeks ago and did a video recording of different uh, local festival local sponsors. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what that means for the community and how they contribute to festival. Yeah, so the festival local program is one of our younger programs, um, and that's local businesses that support Festival International, and we support them. So it's this really neat, uh, mutual, beneficial situation that we've come up with. And um, like you said, we went and interviewed all kinds of different local businesses. So that could be accommodations, that could be professional services, and we try to send people to those companies that you know support us. Um, yeah, so they're just a huge part of what helps us keep this amazing festival going. Yeah, yeah, because it's, uh, it's not cheap. It is not With cheap. it being free, people think, oh, it probably doesn't cost that much to run. Like, it's Almost what, several million dollars. Million, right? yeah. God, mm -hmm. So many moving parts. So yeah, it, it's incredible. It is a lot of moving parts. Um, okay, so with the Lafayette Travel, um, how do you guys promote the festival? Like, what are some of the things you guys do to kind of reach out side the the city or the mm -hmm. parish or even the state to get people here obviously we have international artists that come in so they probably do a little bit of promoting themselves but like what does lafayette travel do to help festival and bring attention to lafayette Sure. Yeah. I mean, so it's it's one of our major festivals. And obviously, like whenever we're out promoting this, either by way of advertising or kind of what I do, um, pitching stories to travel writers, trying to get them to write about this area. Um, the one thing that comes back is like people cannot believe that. The, first of all, they can't believe the size of it, that it takes place here. When you say something like, you know, the largest francophone festival in the world, they're like, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> and so they do a little digging and then they go on our website and then we've got some great video and stuff that people see. And it, it, it's kind of like, okay, you're not just talking this up. This is really what it is. I can go and see like these 50 musicians perform on these seven stages if I wanted, you know, all for free. Um, and theoretically it just cost you a plane ticket in, in a hotel room, you know? Um, so that's extremely appealing, but we, we do uh, promote this primarily outside the state. We do do some promotions inside the state, but what we're focused on um, is ideally that drive market from the, the Houston area, like in Texas. Mm -hmm. And then we do focus on some fly markets um, that we have, you know, obviously with the direct flight from Charlotte, that's something that we always look at because that's easy for people to jump over. Um, but primarily we are promoting this to, it's more people that are um, opt to go to these types of music festivals that are interested in Francophone connections, interested in the Cajun and Creole culture here. Um, so there is some affinity things that we do to kind of hone in on that targeting. But the beautiful thing about um, being able to promote something like this is like, it's not, you're not going to skip through this, that video. I mean, like you won't, if you see that on your computer screen or yeah. if you see that on your CTV when you're sitting there and watching your show and the ad comes on, like it's, it's the funnest thing to promote because it's, these ads are beautiful. I mean, these oh, artists yeah. are amazing and I mean, y'all do such a good job of getting everything out ahead of time. I mean, like we have people that, Hey, is the, is the schedule out yet? Is this guy? I'm like, I will let you know as soon as the schedule comes out, we Love will update it. our webpage and we'll do all that. But yeah, it, it, it is something that we promote heavily. It's one of our main pillars in terms of festivals here that, that we promote and try to get, you know, the occupancy levels and the, and the hotels up and people yeah. staying here. And the fact that it is, you know, five days and then you have all of this other stuff that ties into it, like Cycle Zotico, the marathon, like that there are people that come here to do these things that, you know, trickle into Festival International. So it's, it's much bigger than just these five days for sure. Yeah. And like, so you mentioned hotel occupancy. I was going to ask, mm -hmm. how do you know? like how many people from out of town typically show up. And so that's what you guys use is hotel stays typically like as a rough number, I'm sure. Theoretically. Yeah. There's something called the star report that we get that, that does um, 
report on occupancy and and the room rate, the average room rate. Um, it's it is like we've got mechanisms in place to uh, you know how effective our advertising is for people coming into town. Um, but it's just difficult to know like if somebody let's say from like Baton Rouge got a hotel room here or yeah. whatever. Um, in general, um, as long as people are staying in the hotels and we get those occupancy numbers up and people are at festival having a good time, I think we've all kind of done our job. You know, what is the typical occupancy, I guess, limit or rate that the festival brings? Like, is is there any room at hotels in the area? Or, like, what does that typically look like? Yeah, it's it's something, it's hard to kind of put into a, uh, like, a visual for you. But it, it's very rare. Like, for instance, 100% occupancy probably won't ever happen just because there's numerous hotels throughout the area that, um, like, for instance, it's not close enough to Festival National. People don't want to stay there. But we have not had an issue yet where, yes, our hotels are, you may be hard-pressed to find a room at, like, if you want, like, a Hilton property. You may have to go outside of that. But okay. there is availability during, during a Festival It would be great if we get to you know full out but you can find a room it just may not you may have to do a little bit of searching but we do have typical higher occupancy during those higher festivals like for instance the i can tell you the hilton garden inn right here just because of the proxy for the shuttle um, which we can talk about later uh a little prompt there (laughs) um but that's really great and i know that they always come very close to selling out Mm -hmm. just because people stay there they can access the shuttle and it's almost like you're right there by festival so it just varies but we do do very we do do very very well but again don't let that stop you if you're thinking about coming right just get your hotel room now yeah and there are plenty of other hotels outside of Lafayette. i know that you would ideally want to be as close as you can if you want to come to the festival but um there like you said there are spaces available yeah. um and you kind of did a a a plug and and it sounds like uh, kudos to carly you're talking about the ads that you guys run the videos that you can't skip through and being so well done you are probably the ones that edit the videos right i do yeah i do a lot a lot of that i do most of the ad design and things like that and then we also work with cloud nine marketing and um they've taken over the videography in the last couple years <clears throat> oh but um yeah we kind of team up on that and uh i get to make a lot of commercials and stuff too which is it's super fun to collaborate with them and you know in a way we're collaborating without even communicating mm. necessarily about what we're working on but it's just a yeah. lot of moving parts yeah and you mentioned Cloud9. I know uh, you and you and Hannah were talking with me, um, and they do a lot of the work. I know, um, but I think a couple of years ago, they were kind of on the grounds, kind of being the social media arm of Festival for a while. Are they still in that role? Yeah. So initially, we would just get a marketing agency to help us pretty much the week leading up and throughout because it's so much coverage. Right. But um, now we're able to have them helping us from January through May, which, you know, only elevates our festival, our capabilities, the quality. And, you know, so we can um, give the proper love to our sponsors and to everyone that's helping us put this event on. So um, this past week, I went on vacation and I, uh, I gave access to a few different <laughs> people to do a DL takeover. And Anita Begnode had uh, Friday and I'm glad she used her access to the page to promote downtown in the way. And she used uh, festival as one of her um, videos to make uh, about downtown. And she had Hannah on with her. And like there was so much information being thrown and it it was only like five things but i was like god and then hannah was even uh going okay where where was i like (laughs) so there was a lot um one of those things um was the 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 structural change around a certain i think a certain artist uh lauren daigle Mm -hmm. so i want to talk about that but before i do Let's get to our sponsors. <laughs> uh, you knew I had to do that. So um, our sponsors are uh, the Music Academy of Acadiana, which is an, a, a super appropriate uh, uh, sponsor for this because it's all music related. So the Music Academy of Acadiana is a local founded music school. It's a top choice music school for music lessons and piano, guitar, voice, drums, violin, saxophone, you know, the, all the, all the stuff here. And so if you want to learn audio production or any kind of instrument, whether you're young or old, uh, beginner or an expert at music, you can always learn more. Um, 
They're locally founded by Tim Benson, who is a UL Music School, UL Lafayette Music School graduate. I got to get the, the UL Lafayette part right because they'll come at me if I don't say ULL or, you know, all that stuff. Um, but great local school, been around for a better part of a decade, several awards. They have an award winning in house music uh, recording studio. So a lot of uh, well known people record their albums there. So really cool to see. Uh, you can check them out at their website, musicacademyacadiana.com. Um, you can see it on your screen, too, if you're watching. And ultimately, their goal is to make music lessons fun, educational, and to help foster the next generation of musicians and creative thinkers, because we can always use more of that. That's right. mm-hmm. And then we have our one of our newest um, sponsors, Chase Group Construction. So Chase Group Construction is another locally founded business. Chase Group takes the lead and becomes your one point of contact for the entire design build process. They have a diverse portfolio of projects that range from medical to restaurant to multi-unit shopping center developments. And you can check out their website at chasegroupconstruction.com. You can also see it on your screen. One of my favorite projects to talk about that they've done, and because it centers around food, is Fat Pats and Broussard and Bro Bridge. <clears throat> they took the lead on that, and it's a beautiful building. I mean, I don't like the one in Broussard for sure. You almost feel like you're sitting in a small football field. They have like the, the Megatron in the center and, you know, you can eat your Fat Pat's burger if you are, are a burger fan or if you're not a burger fan, I think they have, you know, chicken wraps, whatever you want. But uh, that's one project that I, I really like to talk about. But anyway, let's get to <laughs> the elephant in the room that I keep mentioning. So Lauren Daigle, first of all, kudos to you guys for even grabbing such an <laughs> artist. I mean, she's a local artist. In, in the sense that she started in Lafayette. I think she might live in New Orleans now because, mm-hmm. you know, why not? Um, <laughs> but um, fun fact about Lauren Daigle, and I don't know if this is, if she would care if I mentioned this or not, but um, I have a friend that went to the same church that she started out of. And he is a, um, a uh, I guess like, like a media director there okay. or a media guy. And his wife, sings on the platform and so lauren daigle started out in that church singing and then started blossoming her career from there and i remember in the early days before lauren daigle really blew up uh, my friend told me that she had a song on k-love i'm like I listen to Kayla every once in a while, and I was like, I, I might have heard her song, but he, so he told me she kind of sounds like Adele. I'm like, so that's the that's the thing. She kind of sounds like the Adele, the Christian Adele, if you want to say. And so, I, of course, I I put it on Kayla. I'm like, I, I sometimes listening to Kayla. It's very repetitive, and especially when they do their pledge funds. I'm like, all right, turn it off. But I was listening, and then I sat. I I heard a song that sounded kind of like an Adele voice. I'm like, I. I bet you this is it. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, the song ends, and that was Lauren Daigle, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dang, she really, she's from Lafayette? I was like, I was mind blown. So um, it was really cool to kind of hear that she started out in a local Lafayette church, and then now she is, I guess, in her own right, the one of the largest Christian singers, um, I guess, in, almost in the world. So going, kind of segueing into that, People in the comment sections of social media were asking, why Lauren Daigle? She's not an international, quote unquote, artist, but you guys said in one of your recent posts, I think, is um, she has gone into the international stream of music. So what was the thought process of targeting Lauren Daigle, getting her on and all that good stuff? Like, what was what was that like? What was the thought process? So um, <clears throat> Lisa Stafford is our programming director, and she's been at it for over 20 years. And she's got, you know, connections all over the world, as well as locally, obviously. And she just spent a lot of time trying to think who would be the best artist to showcase for the Bicentennial Celebration ah, this year. makes sense. Yeah, so we wanted something big, we wanted something different, and we wanted to celebrate Lafayette Parish. Um, so it's pretty genius and she just so happened to um, know Lauren's manager enough to be able to hop on the phone with him and apparently it was one of Lauren's bucket lists Mm -hmm. to play Festival International which is really really cool that is cool and so we just happened to catch her at the right time in her career and you know always we love to showcase Louisiana's culture and that's diversity be whatever that may be musically and so she's kind of just the perfect candidate we're very proud of her and um 
you know, we have a lot of different Louisiana artists that we showcase. Right. And so I think it still surprised people just because she is so famous. But um, yeah, like, let's celebrate her. Let's celebrate the victory of success for her and that she's from here and everything. Yeah. So um, people are super excited. We're very thankful for our partners for helping us make this possible. And it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Um, and this is not... I mean, a lot of in the comment section, a lot of people are talking about, oh, you know, she's local. How is she international? That's our she, thing. Right. It's a big part. <laughs> and, but she's not the first local artist and especially not the first local white artist that we've had. Uh, we've had Mark Broussard right. play one Perfect of my first example. years going. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the first time hearing Mark Broussard. I was like, I love this music. Like, mm -hmm. this is really soulful, kind of bluesy. And I'm like... And that made me want to listen to Mark Broussard even more, knowing now that he was from the Karen Crow area. I'm like, I live in Karen Crow. Like, mm. this is so cool. Crazy. So, yeah. Um, what does festival look like around an artist of such a magnitude? Like, she's still, she's like, she's peaking. Like, she's I'm in that, that height. Right. And she sells out of, like, her shows. Mm-hmm. And this is a <laughs> this is a festival where it's known to be freely accessible. Mm -hmm. What are you guys going to do with the amount of people? Because you know there's going to be a lot of people. I've been so proud of my team. I can't take the credit because I'm like more marketing world, but I've been so proud of my team for like all the effort and the thought that's gone into, you know, how to make this run smoothly. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, just so many moving parts. We work so closely with all of Lafayette, downtown Lafayette, security, police, like everyone's on board to make sure this works great. The fire marshal will be, you know, keeping up with the capacity. Um, so it's definitely a lot of extra legwork going into this, but it's going to be an amazing year to remember unlike ever before. So we're very excited about that. Um, so, you know, all of uh, the shows leading up to Lauren Daigle, it's probably going to get filled up before she starts. Like, let's be honest. We know people are coming in from all over and they're very excited and that yeah. makes us excited. Um, so once Park International does fill up, we've set up a satellite location at Park San Susi with a big, awesome projector. I kind of think of it as like a drive-in theater, yeah. except you're on foot. But it's the live feed of all the opening ceremonies, all of the acts leading up to Lauren Daigle. And um, you'll just still get to experience it live in that way. And what's also cool about that, it's going to be only standing space in Park International. So that's going to save space. Um, so if you do want to sit, if you do want to, you know, let your children run around, if you do want to take advantage of all the food vendors surrounding uh, Parks on Soucy, the J.D. Bank Pavillon de Cuisine, then, you know, just go kick back and relax over there. You're not going to miss out. And um, it's just a, an awesome backup plan and uh, another way to festival. Yeah. So in the Park International spot, mm -hmm. what does the... What does that look like as far as, um, I guess, gatekeeping? How many, like, are you guys going to be counting people as they come in? Like, because I know there's, like, only a couple of entrances into that. I think one or We're two. We're doing one entrance for this, and then there's also an ADA accessible entrance as well. Um, so, yeah, they'll be doing a count, and we have extra security. As mentioned, um, there is going to be more stipulations on what you can bring into the park. So your your bags are all subject to search, just making sure to keep everyone safe. Are you doing metal detecting too? Yeah. So we've got extra security for this event, which is fantastic. I mean, like I said, let's keep everyone right. safe. Right. I mean, the safer the better. Smooth. I mean, yeah. it's, sometimes it's a little awkward to get scanned. It's different, but, but yeah. like, like I said, like let's be excited that we're thinking this through. And I'm very proud of my team and uh, just of Lafayette for doing their best to make it yeah. smooth. <laughs> yeah. And this is going to be a big one. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, people are going to be driving from all over the place mm -hmm. because they know if they know of festival, they know that mm -hmm. it's freely accessible to go to without having to pay some exorbitant like amount of tickets. Cause you know, like a Taylor Swift ticket nowadays is like, you know, three, $400 for like a bad seat. Mm. Like, like behind, people are sitting behind the stage wow. at a Taylor Swift concert just to see her in that, uh, cart where they put all the cleaning supplies. Oh yeah. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> but, like, that's how she gets, she gets on stage. Yeah. That's how she gets on stage through a cleaning cart. That's, got brooms in it but it's big enough to, that she can fit in people sit backstage just to be able to see that part and they'll watch the, the video you're i dude, live in a hole i told you it's <laughs> tiktok is 
all that, all that footage. So yeah, I mean, I guess like tell like if you're coming in, like certainly get there early. You know, if you yeah. want a good spot for Lauren Nagel, because like you said, there are going to be some people performing, and like you said, people do pay a lot of money for these Taylor Swift tickets, and this is free. But there are ways that you can totally support this festival through buying your pen, right? Like, buying some of the cool merchandise, and then supporting the food and the craft vendors. Absolutely. I mean, we were you know talking earlier about how this festival is supported, and it's not just these large donors. I mean, it's it's you, the attendee, going and choosing, you know to buy from a food vendor, um, you know, buying a pen, buying that new shirt, supporting that artist and buying that city. Um, you know, that's, those are ways that you can come, even if you're not from this area and you're just, let's say you're just coming in and going out for, you know, the Lauren Daigle performance, go out and support the festival in that tiny way. Because if you appreciate it, having access to that, where you would not be able to afford to go to a concert, it's a really great way and a small nominal way to you know, yeah. give back. Yeah. Um, and kind of in that same vein of, you know, on your position, do you, and going back to the, the hotel occupancy, do you, do you anticipate hotels being closer to capacity for this year? Or what are you, what are you anticipating for this festival with the, with the, the headliner that we have? I think just in general, it's always interesting to see after the fact, cause you don't really right. know. But again, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to be hard pressed. If you want a hotel room in Lafayette, you are going to be able to find it again. It just might not be right next or like, you know, near, you might have to do a little bit of driving or Uber down there, but you're not, you know, you're not going to have an issue. And, and it's just really fun every year to see how this grows. And really like the, the fun thing for me is like chatting with the people, like, some people in Baton Rouge don't know about this, mm -hmm. right? And, and they're like, what is this? And Wait, it, they don't always, know about festivals? Yeah, and it, it's like, I guess it's so commonplace for us, yeah. but like, you know, it's e even some of my counterparts, it's like they know of it, but they don't have any idea of how big it is. So even whenever I get them to come, you know, from a different city or a different CVB, they're like, this is awesome and it's free. And I'm like, yeah, just buy a pen. <laughs> yeah, like, buy a pen. Good. Yeah, and but then it, meanwhile, you can meet someone in France that's been like, right. and put someone in Baton Rouge maybe didn't even hear about it. It's right. interesting. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, uh, yeah, all kind of people you could meet. And so, and you mentioned buying a pen. Um, are passes still available? That's a great question. So we sold out of passes. Awesome. Um, I believe in early March. So <sighs> we sold out of passes. That happened last year as well. So we're excited that people love the pass program. That's another fantastic way to show your support. And with it, you get great perks like up close views of the music, private restrooms, um, express beverage lines. Mm. And then we were just discussing before we started that the 5K also sold out which happened as well last year. So I think people have caught on to these programs and are loving them. And above all, I think they're excited to be back in person with us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, the, the pandemic situation, that was a, uh, a Shake strange up. time for the festival. Like, all having to watch it on Facebook or but YouTube. But y'all killed it. I yeah, mean, no, that was great. absolutely amazing. And y'all got so much recognition for it from people all around. And you, I had people reach out to y'all to be like, how'd y'all do this? We want to replicate this. We like, were the first It was to do a it. big deal. It's not like y'all were just like, oh, let me just put something up there. I mean, y'all really thought about it. It was a wild experience. Um, of course, I'm a video editor, but like some of my staff isn't. And we're digging through archived video that you never thought would come in handy for a purpose like the world shutting down. <laughs> but um, it was cool. Like, we made a whole festival channel experience and kind of connected people, you know, locally, but internationally as well at a time when we were all alone at home. Uh, it was crazy. It's like a weird dream that, yeah. that went well and had a happy ending. <laughs> and kudos to AOC, um, the organization yes. that does a lot of the videography and like the camera For work. For years and years now. Yeah, yeah. They're they, amazing. So, I mean, without them, I don't know if y'all would have been able to pull as such of a mm -hmm. live stream off as y'all did. Yeah, there's no way we could have like shown old footage like that in full sets. Um, and then, you know, we had some more modern stuff as well and just getting creative with what content we did have in existence. So, yeah, yeah, it was, it was cool. It was weird to, to watch and it, it still, it had that, that, that festival mm -hmm. vibe and you could see people liking the videos and the comments were going and like, you kind of felt it like the spirit of the festival, mm -hmm. but there's nothing like being on the ground, the sights, the smells, the sights and everyone appreciated uh, it and missed it yeah. and came back like supporting full force. So we're super thankful for yeah. that. Um, so bicentennial, that's a big deal. It's a big year, uh, big deal. Cause it's 200 years mm -hmm. uh, of Lafayette, like in existence. So like, what are you guys going to be doing for that? 
Is that uh, that could be that could be a you? I think it's a it's a two parter. I mean, I know that the bicentennial is is uh, supporting the Lor- the Lauren Daigle performance yes. and the performance that that have to do with that. That's their contribution to Festival International. I know when they were planning out the bicentennial year and trying to figure out celebrations, it was very important for them to integrate into the existing festivals like Festival Acadien, Festival yeah. International, um, and Mardi Gras with the Friday Night Parade. So I think they they've done a good job of integrating the the bicentennial celebration. Um, of bringing Lauren Daigle and celebrating that, you know, our history. Absolutely. And they're also doing a um, a Zydeco showcase show as well, which is really exciting. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but all celebrating Lafayette. It's very neat to just take a moment and pause and be like, wow, look how far we've come and still strong and so much culture to celebrate. And it's really cool to be part of it. I think you could agree with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. So um, I want to know, Like, I think you kind of touched on it a little bit, Mm -hmm. but what does it take or like, how do you guys find international artists from around the world that that may or may not be uh, well known to U.S. you know, residents? But like, how do you guys seek them out? Like, I know the Internet's a great place to kind of just, you know, get lost in exploration. But like, what's the process look like to acquire uh, an act and like are you able to discuss like you know payment like how do you how do you guys get them to come over here uh well the artists are absolutely paid um which is actually <laughs> well, I wasn't, no no look, but i get asked I wasn't that saying, i was not in, in i get asked that the, okay really so i'm yep. answering that for anyone that for some reason would think that they may not um that is a big part of where our fundraising goes into you got to pay for them to get here yeah um it's a lot of work that uh again lisa stafford has been doing this for over 20 years so she has an amazing resource of contacts around the world a lot of managers a lot of music managers um some of which focus on just international acts so she's just so in the network, you know, and she's very, very, um, important resource for them as well. You know, she gets a lot of phone calls and questions too. So she works with, uh, that big network of international music, but you know, it could be, Hey, check out this band. Someone just sending her a YouTube link. And she's like, who is this? This is amazing. And then we also do an application process, um, on our website in the summer, there's a three month window in which you can submit your band's, uh, video content, a little bit about yourself, so there's multiple ways that go into it, honestly. Okay. Yeah. So you allow international bands to kind of uh, try out or like submit Yeah, stuff. they can yeah. submit. And then um, let's be honest, the visa process is a massive hurdle mm-hmm. and a huge headache that she has to, you know, deal with and sort. And every now and then, like this year, we had to cancel one of our big acts, JP Bimini, because uh, last minute, just like the visa thing wasn't going to pan out quick enough. So these things do happen with this line of work. Um, and you, guys, you guys found a backup or had a backup pretty the quick. The backup was pretty awesome, too. Yeah. <laughs> Huge shout out to the Grouse Room because they had booked uh, the Whalers and also Dr. Nativo for Festival Week. And they were gracious enough to share them with us. Oh, nice. Um, so now those artists, you know, get to double dip and play a little extra. And I know our audiences love them. And both of those bands love playing for our audiences because we're known to have a really good vibe out there. Yeah. Good crowd. All right. So uh, I want to say it was a couple of years ago. One of the strategies in getting artists onto the, the stages here was that through the process of kind of acquiring them, you guys also tap into their um, their tour kind of routes. Yes. So like they you don't they're not I'm, I I would guess most of them aren't just coming here straight from their country here and there or I don't know if that's Some a, do. Yeah. But you're exactly right. So um Looking at their tour is a big part of how Lisa will plan out who's going to be playing, you know, a year, two years in advance, even she can already be looking at when a certain artist is coming through here, or if, you know, they're doing an album release, it's coming out in a year or two, like, let's catch them on that tour. We share artists with Jazz Fest a bit each year to try to see how we can make it worth it for that artist and just geographically make sense for what they have going on. Um, So yeah, she has to she has to think a lot and she works a lot of late nights and a lot of different time chain time zones. Yeah. Um, so big shout out to Lisa. Yeah. So 
Now, I want to know, what is y'all's favorite part of festival? Uh, I guess, Carla, if you want to go first, uh, whether that be food or if you have a favorite act, or like what's a couple of things that you love about festival that you may want people to know? I mean, the music is what sold me yeah. <laughs> the most. I started out working in the music industry, doing um, photo, video, and design work. So that interests me the most. But I have the benefit of not being from here, though I appreciate the culture because my family is from here. But I was raised in Tennessee for the first 19 years of my life. So when I transferred to UL, I was fresh eyes coming to this festival that I couldn't believe was free. And there was an African band just going off on stage. And I'm from like a little country bumpkin town. Yeah. And I was just like, what is happening? This is amazing. And I recorded it on my little flip phone and sent it to my brother. Hi, Rez. Oh, <laughs> such good quality. <laughs> Um, so that was just the big selling point for me. And I've, you know, come every year since and just been hooked. And so when this job came open that I now have, I couldn't believe that I got it. And yeah. it's just amazing and exciting. And I have a habit of trying to see, I get like attached to the bands after working on the lineup video. So I like know who everyone is and who I want to mm -hmm. see. And then I keep trying to catch them all at every stage and, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's, I know. It sounds like a lot. It's so exciting, though. So definitely the music for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Jesse, what are some of your favorite parts of festival? And it can, you don't have to, you don't have to say the music. If it is the music, great. But like, I, I, look, food is a big deal for me. I know there's a lot of food there. Uh, but yeah, what, what's your favorite part of festival? So there's there's three things, and I yeah. guess like not necessarily a favorite part, but things that I've experienced over the years. And the first that like Carly and I were talking about this is um, if you've got kids, and I know there's a lot of new parents, um, the children's stage is actually pretty awesome. Like I've watched it evolve from, um, you know, they, 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 they're putting acts that you would see like on the main stage there. So you get to see them in this really intimate environment. And I, I think that a lot of people see that and don't check it out because they think they're going to be missing out or it's just like a bunch of crafts but it is it's so cool and Great they do point. it's it's such a good place to go if, even if you don't have kids you need some shade like just go and check it out um it's it's probably one of the the best kept secrets of festival the second thing that i will tell you <laughs> is that um if you are like usually i'm working during festival so I'm like hosting people and i have all of this but i'm trying to get from point a to b so if you were like me and trying to get to stages make the big blocks don't try to go through the main streets like avoid jefferson street avoid vermilion oh, yeah, literally crowded. take the effort and make the huge big block you're gonna get there so much faster so that's only if you don't want to do the people watching and the food and all that like if you just need to get from stage to stage make a huge block don't go down Jefferson Street. <laughs> Good tip. Um, yeah. My third tip um, is I, I've got children that like to spend money um, and shop, and I love to support my vendors, but we do it in a – it's very difficult to do it because you're either carrying stuff around all day or you're fighting crowds and you can't see stuff. Sunday morning – is the best time. Wake up early, 8.30, 9 o'clock, get down there, start walking a little bit around a little bit early. You can actually chat with these vendors. It's not packed. And some of them we would like make deals with if you buy a lot of stuff. Go and check it out. Scout it out the first couple of days, but Sunday morning, I mean, think about it. They're tired. They're coming in. There's not a whole lot of people there. That's like my perfect mm -hmm. festival time is first thing on Sunday. That first act, there's usually not a big crowd because everybody's hungover. So you can kind of go <laughs> hit it, in. get it, get your crafts and you don't have to fight people. You can like go get your favorite food right off the bat and get yeah. that, you know, that spinach bowl or bread, you know, <laughs> hot and fresh. So those are my three tips that and like comfortable shoes. I think like, yeah, yeah, I mean, look cute, but take care of your feet. Yes. I'm so thankful that we don't have, standing water in downtown Lafayette like New Orleans does because you don't want to wear open toed shoes in New Orleans. But in Lafayette, we have a great, we have a great uh, clean street system. And uh, so walking around shouldn't be an issue. But yeah, wear good, good Tacos shoes. Or something. Comfortable shoes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this is great. This has been fun. I, I don't think that there's much more that I think we need to cover. We covered the big, the big one in the talk of with Lauren Daigle. Um, I will say that if you are a Lauren Daigle fan, if if you haven't already figured out where to go, um, I know they she wears these like signature like flat bill cowboy hat looking things. Oh, yeah. I don't know what they're technically called. They're just a, a hat, um, but. 
Kobe A Bear in downtown Lafayette. Cajun Hatter. Yeah, the mm. Cajun Hatter. He is she buys a lot of her hats from him. No like, way. Oh, yeah. That is cool. You didn't know that? I live in a hole. We've discussed no. it. <laughs> I don't know where Lauren Tagle buys her hats. She buys them from I'm not Kobe. Afraid to admit it. That's amazing though. I yeah. love a festival hat. Like that. I always have one on. I don't know if that's like the most well known thing, but like it's it's like she, to me. <laughs> she's she's posted about it before. Like she's yeah. mentioned she's That's tagged cool. Kobe in her one of her posts and it was like one of these really like slick hats. And like I don't know if you've ever been inside of his shop, but mm-hmm. his hats have there there he has beaver, mm-hmm. like real beaver, neutral rat. Crazy rabbit. Like if you want a special hat, now you're gonna you're gonna pay a special price. But it's like, worth it. It's so yeah, worth it. these are high quality hats. He makes them in the in his store. Uh, I did a short little interview with him and showed off his business and just seeing the back end of like how everything works and like all the tools that he has. It was really really unique. And what's also really cool, uh, kind of plugging Kobe, is he his shop was in New Orleans. Now he's he's from like the 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 countryside of mm-hmm. Louisiana, but I uh, say C- Cajun countryside. And he started in New Orleans, or, or I think he started in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. I, I think he did. I have my start. Yeah, but he moved all of his stuff to Lafayette because that's where he he felt closer to his culture here, which is really cool. And just the fact that Lauren supports him, and I don't know. So if you're a Lauren Daigle fan and you want a fancy hat <laughs> that like Lauren Daigle wears, you know where to go. Go to Cajun Hatter in downtown Lafayette. Yeah, support those downtown businesses. That's it. Um, yeah, that's a perfect thing to bring up. Definitely is pop there, in. Is there anything that we didn't mention that is worth mentioning? <laughs> we did the same thing. <laughs> uh, I would just want to say volunteer if you haven't already signed up. Um, head to festivalinternational.org, and you can also get the full scoop there. And our mobile app has all the same uh, features as well. Dude, the mobile app is really good. Is, I've been yeah. using it every year, and it's it's helped a lot. Thank you. It's it's really well done. I'll, I'll give you that. Cool. Um, and Jesse, is there anything that you wanted to say? I was just say, um, Carly had mentioned earlier about she does the video for all the performers. They also have a playlist on Spotify. So if you want to kind of get yourself right. hype and get yourself familiar, it's on our landing page. I know it's on their Spotify account as well. Um, so you could kind of check that out just along with, yeah, again, like buy that pen, buy that shirt, buy those, you know, those artist CDs, um, and just continuing supporting festival. Cause it's, it's important. It's one of the probably one of the best things about Lafayette because you really get to see like us on a stage, like on a global stage and us sharing like our culture with the world and the world coming and receiving that. It's, yeah. it's a really beautiful exchange. It is. And so um, I'm showing the Facebook page right now. So you can see a nice, well done banner, a nice, beautiful purple banner that says April 26th through the 30th of this year. And you see the Angelique Standing there with her arms <laughs> open and really pretty, uh, very well one done. Of our big headliners. Yeah, she's amazing. So, so that's really cool. Uh, yeah, so check out their Facebook page. You can like it, and you want. You have I'll throw else? one more. Yeah. I'll throw one more thing because it's a slight plug for uh, Lafayette Travel. But we do this um, thing called Lafayette Weekly. It's the live music listings, um, and there are some amazing after shows happening at festival. Yes. Um, so be sure to check up if you just like Google Lafayette Weekly or go to our website. It's going to be there. But there are some. There's some really good collaborative shows that are happening after festival if if you have the energy yeah, yeah. and I'll, I'll show the website for lafayette travel real quick just in case people need to see that and they and have a fantastic newsletter as well okay that okay. shares that with you mm-hmm. so the newsletter where can i is it the little um you just hit the butt yeah at the bottom if you hit the little button at the bottom or if you go to lafayette weekly there's a direct link to sign up for that if you just want the music stuff but if you sign up okay, for the newsletter yeah, I you see kinda, the, I you see get the newsletter it all now yeah but yeah we do have a lot of newsletters so <laughs> got it all right so yeah you can go to the lafayette travel.com not the lafayette travel lafayette travel.com the walmart <laughs> the, 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 lafayette go, travels <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, oh Walmart. Lord, the Walmarts. Okay, yeah, Lafayette Travel dot <laughs> com uh, with an Walmarts with an S. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for having us, and for all you do, Ben and Jesse. Same to you guys. Mm, thanks, Carly. It's yeah. gonna be a good year. It's gonna be a crazy year. I'm excited to see how everything works and how you guys handle the obvious increase in crowd that's gonna happen. And I look forward to seeing the 
the the numbers hopefully come back that all the hotels in the area were at max capacity. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool to see if it happens. If not, great. You, that means you still have room to book. Um, but I'm excited to see how this works. And um, I don't know if I'm going to fight the crowd to see Lauren Dago. I, I might be down there. I might get might earshot. Might be at Park San Susi. Yeah, I That's might do it. that. Or I you have... can go to the other stage, and yeah. um, it'll probably be a little less crowded, which is cool. Yeah. So Plus, there's going to be tons of other other bands and all that good stuff, too, That's right? That's what's cool about yeah. it. Something for everyone at the same time. So do yeah. what suits you. Yeah, I mean, make it your own. And, uh, yeah, Festival International, man. Crazy. 2023. All right. Well, that is it. Thank you, Carly, Jesse, so for much. coming on. Happy and, uh, festival. Yeah, happy festival. festival. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in, guys. All right. Well, that is it. You guys can listen, obviously, on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and we just uh, converted our YouTube uh, channel into a podcast YouTube channel. I don't know. It's weird to think. But anyway, you can find our the podcast on YouTube Music now, which is kind of cool. Just type in the Tea Podcast. You will see a bunch of other Tea Podcasts, too, because the drag queen community is flooded with tea. So, um, <laughs> But ours has a purple logo. It says the Tea Podcast. Uh, hopefully you find it. And if not, uh, I'll, I'll post the link eventually. But uh, yeah, anyway, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.